Okay, so at this point, um, troubleshooting it or t beta testing it in this specific way is that uh, I show all and I get the pop-up and then I save stuff, it saves it, and I show it. Obviously, there's different ways to beta test it. If I go directly to click save here and then show all, and no pop-up because I am putting emptiness into the array. That's not an error. It is taking emptiness. I should perform more error checking. If what is being typed is empty, give an error. We're not going to do that, but that's why user input is always complex. That's why sites get hacked. That's the number one, one way a site gets hacked. There's an input box and someone figures out a way that they didn't properly secure this input box and I'm going to type valid code here and it'll then erase their database. So whenever you have input like that, that can be a big cause of problems in your app unless you sanitize your input and do processing and all of that. We don't have to worry about it just yet. What I want to do is uh, I've got a bunch of names that I can save here. I want to clear out the array. I want to empty the array. I want to start over with these names. And then we'll start to talk about the retrieving a random name and all of that. But what I want to do with uh, clearing the, the array, I want a, uh, a button. Show all names. Delete all names. And I want to delete the names in the array, I also maybe want to hide the names here. Uh, hide those names, different than delete the names. I just want to hide them. So we'll do a, a hide names and delete names. We'll go back to the code. We'll go back to the HTML part. We've got uh, show all button. We need hide names and delete names. So a new button. Afterward, you can press enter. This is where we're going to be on the same line. I'm not going to do a break, but I'm going to move it to the next line just so that you can see it. But this will still be on one line. Hide names. ID. BTN. Hide. If you did want it on a separate line, you would need a break. I don't. I'm just writing it on multiple lines so that you can see it. I'll also add another button while I'm here. Input type button. Text value on the button will be delete. Delete names ID. So we can reference it via the JavaScript. BTN delete all. These IDs, we're making them up. They can be any names we want. Any name that makes sense. So now there's three buttons that exist on screen, three objects that JavaScript can refer to and refer to them easily because of the IDs. Each has an ID that is different, a unique ID. Only one thing in my whole program can have an ID of button delete all. If something else has it, how does it know which button you want to click on? And sometimes we do want to run the same function on multiple buttons. We have a way to do that. We're focusing right now on document.getElementById. There are other ways for it to be triggered by seven different buttons to do the same thing. <coughs> That's for a little bit later. So make sure you've got the buttons, unique IDs, your spelling counts. Capital letters need to be then used capital letters in the JavaScript. So we'll do the same thing. We need an we need an on click to then run a function. First we'll try the hide all.
So we'll go back down after function show all a new line document dot get element by ID this time BTN hide all in the event of an on click run the function FN hide uh, hide all semicolon next line function fn hide all open close parentheses open close curly brace and that's the end of fn hide all so this is uh, something we're going to do over and over but then when we get when we connect uh, with jQuery, we'll be able to write that even faster. Document dot get element by ID blah 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 on click all of that. We'll be able to type it a lot faster with jQuery. Get element. Thank you. <clears throat> nope, this is outside. Oh, yeah, it should be outside. Okay. Yeah, that should be outside. Good eye there as well. So, all of this that we wrote here, sorry, should be outside of the function show off. So, after the function show all, all of this, which you can just drag outside. So all of that document, document element ID and the function that should have been outside of the function show off. It's a separate function, separate set of steps. So what we want to do at this point, we've got the button to hide names. The idea is that once I've started to save names and show names, now I want to, to hide the names. The names are appearing in a div. We can hide the div. So. Um, what we're doing inside of this function, there's the div document dot get element by ID in quotes div show dot display equals none. Sorry, it's a dot style a dot display equals none. Here we're actually manipulating CSS. When we had dot 
inner HTML up here, we were manipulating HTML via JavaScript. We were writing or rewriting HTML. JavaScript lets us do that. And then down here, we are accessing the style property of an object and then changing the display CSS. So we can add or remove or alter CSS via JavaScript. We can add or alter or remove HTML via JavaScript. That's why it's the most powerful and it could be the most complicated because it can do it all. You can write all your HTML in JavaScript. And that's very common in a modern website. With some JavaScript processing, it, would, it can create then a whole screen to display and animate it and everything. So the point of this is that we're setting the display CSS property to none. It's style it's CSS to that object. What should happen then is if I refresh it, I'll add a name, I'll add another name, I'll add another name, show names, hide names. Show names, well, this is when you get to the, com the complexity of the JavaScript. We had said, let's, let's hide this div, so it did it. But then we never said, okay, now let's show the div. It's writing content in the div, but it's just not displaying it on screen. So this is when we start to see, oh, okay, I've done something that works at this point, but then that changes something that I did at another point. The way we fix this then is, somewhere here in my code, I'm trying to display, I'm trying to actually write HTML. I technically am not displaying it. When we have up on line 56, we're writing HTML here to something that exists, is visible on screen. Down here I said, let's hide the div. Up here we're saying, let's write HTML into that div, but we're not saying anything about actually displaying the div. So, we'll say, back on line uh, 56, where we say, uh, write all the names. We will do the opposite of hiding the div. I'm going to copy this part here. I don't want to retype it. That div, we've written something inside of it. Now we need to display it because it's hidden. Style dot display equals quotes block. Display none hides it. Display block shows it. Note down here, uh, via CSS manipulation, we hid the div with names. On line, whatever your line number is, mine is 57. On line 57, we re-show it. I don't think that's a real word, but we get the idea. Up on line 57, I can write the comment, display a div that was hidden on line um, 68, 67. So if I refresh that, add some content, save, add some content, save, show, there's the content, hide, show. Add more content, save, show, it shows, hide it. Add more content while it's hidden, 
save it, show it, it did add it. So you see it's an interrelated puzzle piece. We had written code to hide the div, but then we technically never wrote code to show the div. It was showing because we wrote it in the HTML block, but then with CSS manipulation of JavaScript, we hit it. So then we need to re-show it. The show all. Yeah, because before you write the code block, when I click it, and then I click back and show all, it didn't show. Exactly. And so once we wrote the code block, and after I click the hidden, and click on the show all, and then it disappear again. So it means that if the block for hidden only interact itself and the block, like it's a separate interaction. It doesn't really. They're separate interactions because they are separated with different triggers. Yes, right. So it didn't hide it until we click show all. Yeah. So none of this will take effect yeah. without ever clicking this. If we never click this, it will never hide it. And this is kind of superfluous. It doesn't even matter. It's displaying it automatically and we're displaying it again. So it doesn't even matter. Yeah. But then that matters after we've hidden it at least once. So if only there were a way that we could use the same button for off and on. There is. We won't do it, but there is. That will require more of the checking. Check first. Is it, dis is it displayed? Yes, then hide it. Is it hidden? Yes, then show it. So there'd be more of that if-else added to that button. I don't want to do it just yet, but there is a way to do that using the one button as a toggle. <coughs> depending on the current state of the div, either show it or hide it. And it's a lot easier to do that toggle in jQuery. If we had the jQuery library active right now, because we don't, we have to write it manually. We have to do this if-else stuff. There is a built-in jQuery command, I believe it's simply called toggle, and it will check. Is it hidden? Then display it. Is it uh, displaying? Then hide it. It'll do the opposite automatically instead of us writing if else to check. But we'll get back to that later. I want to deal with, okay, I want to start all over. I want to delete everything inside of the, 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 the array. I want to clean out the array to start over. What I also want to do is give the person uh, a little bit of warning and say, are you sure you want to do this? Because if we delete everything in the array, it's gone unless we further program and undo. If we don't program and undo, it'll just do it and it's gone. So first we will do a little check. Do you sure you want to delete? We've got a button ready to delete everything, which we call btn delete all. So we're going to need document.getElementById btn delete all. Make sure you're outside of the hide all function. Document.getElement this is a part about if you want to copy and paste to save yourself some effort. Copy and paste that, cut that, open that, quote, quote. Whatever way you want to do it. We need that again. We need the unique name of the button. DTM delete all. Dot on click equals some function, some series of steps, fn delete all. need to define what fn delete all means. Function fn delete all curly braces so then we're going to define what delete all means. No, that's not a mistake. Why? That's not how you spell all in English, but it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake unless, uh, as long as you make your mistakes consistently. And here I'm saying call function all, great, function all, not a mistake. But if I had typed 
up there called function delete all, and here it's function all. That's a mistake. Or vice versa. If I'm saying call function all, and I call here function all, that's a mistake. As long as you're consistently wrong, it's not a mistake. So the delete all, uh, the purpose of this one is to um, first pop up uh, to, to confirm, are you sure you want to delete it? We had the if-else conditional statement. That's one way to check for a couple of conditions. Let's look at a different kind of conditional statement where we can select kind of like multiple choice. Let's say multiple choice conditional statement. Switch. The syntax is we're checking something in the parentheses. If we were checking something in that parentheses of if. Here, switch. I'm going to check possibilities. Curly brace. Close curly brace. And of switch. Down here. And uh, function delete all. We're going to um, we're going to basically ask a question. Are you sure you want to delete everything? So the answers basically are yes or no. But we could ask for something more complex with three possibilities or, or thirty possibilities. So the switch is one way to check the possib multiple possibilities. Um, we will write here what we're asking in a moment. But the way switch further works is then you have a case. We'll say case AAA colon AAA break. We'll ask for something. There could have been a case. There could have been a result. Something. Stuff will happen. The end. The answer we get back could have been another case. Maybe we're asking for a person to type in their username. So in case the person type username Victor, do 20 steps here, break, and then keep going. <coughs> We ask, what's your username? The case, they could have written John. Do six steps, break, keep going. So whatever we ask here, it will find the possibility and do whatever amount of steps, break, and then skip the rest of the possibilities. We might not be able to think of every possibility. The default possibility is called default. didn't think of every possible login name or every possible error message. This could work really well for errors. When we get to the database, we will see that if we try, as we try to save stuff to the database, we could have a result of saving to the database was successful, saving to the database was unsuccessful, connection to the database failed. We could have a lot of possibilities of saving to the database. A switch could be very useful there in case of saving properly in case of not saving properly, in case of a broken internet connection, in case of something I didn't think of, default. Do stuff. And end. Skip all of that. Go to this one. Do that. Break. Continue after the switch. We have a um, JavaScript built-in command, like we have alert, where we get a pop-up. We have a built-in one like that where it can have 
have us ask a question instead of uh, instead of alert. So in the parentheses, we'll type confirm. Open and close parentheses. Yes, built in. Confirm. So alert simply pops up what you write in the parentheses and shows it. Confirm ask, lets you ask a question with then an OK or a cancel. Are you sure you want to delete everything? So that message, in quotes, is what will pop up. The box <coughs> will have a cancel or confirm or OK. It'll have a cancel or an OK. the result of the person either clicking OK or Cancel are my cases. The, the result is either a true or a false. There's other possibilities, perhaps. But actually, our first case will be true. Our second case will be false. There could be a third possibility. They might have clicked Maybe. Or something else. So in case of true, it's built in. True or false is built into the result of confirm, a callback result. So true and false and confirm have to run in combination of the Yes, con confirm has a uh, true or false possibility, but we could have other, other questions or other things to check for, and then we can have more cases. And we can define case yes, we can define case maybe, case seven, console log we or they wish to delete console. They don't wish to delete default result 3. Save it and run it. Save a few names. Click the delete button. You'll get a pop-up with the question. Check your console. If you click Cancel, it should then show you they don't wish to delete. If you it, try again, if you try to delete again and click OK, it still won't delete it, but the console will say they're trying to delete. Result 3, we probably won't be able to trigger result 3. Confirm, I believe, only has true and false. But we have other ones also. We have uh, prompt, which gives us more possibilities. And we can write our own. We've got true or false built into confirm. If we didn't think of a possibility, default would trip. It'll say result 3. Let's see. I'll save it over. What's that? Okay. Good eye. Thank you. Let's save on that. Pull up your console right away. If you get errors, hunt them down right away. I'm going to put something in the array. Three things. I know there's something in the array. I'll try to delete. Pop up. Are you sure you want to delete? And I have OK and cancel. Alert only says OK. I have OK or cancel. I'll cancel. I hit case false. We don't wish to delete. Now this is going to get cluttered, so you can clear out your console with the little trash can. Right there. I'm going to hit delete names again. If I cancel, I get 
I get the false case. And I try to delete again. I'll click OK. I get the true case. I'll try to delete again. There's nothing else I can click. I can't click anywhere else. Sometimes you have a little X, which could be a third possibility. That might be the third possibility of default. In this case, I've only got true or false. They're labeled OK or cancel. We can name them something else with more programming, but this is true, that's false. So I'm landing in false case or true case. That's the point of the switch. Depending on what you're checking for here, and this is rather simple, but depending what we're checking here, if someone's trying to log in with a certain username, in case of username Victor, do the following. In case of username Janet, do the following. In case of username Bill, do the following. If I didn't think of a name, default. And so, this is the basic skeleton. This is the basic skeleton of the switch. We're not done yet. If I, if I click delete and click OK, all it did was you wish to delete, but we never actually made it delete. Here's how we make it delete. So. In the event that they really do want to delete, the way you clear the array, similar how we had clearing the div up here, the div, or not that one, oh yeah, that like that one, if we want to empty the input, we filled it with nothing, we sort of do something similar like that for the array. The name of the array is all names. That's where we're storing all the names, equals empty array. That array was filling with names. But now we're setting the array equal to nothing. Empty the array. Everything that was in it, now it's gone. It's out of memory, it's gone. A person may have had names visible on screen at this moment. So we will say fn hide all. We had to trigger manually hide the names. But here, after deleting the names, Let's hide the names, and here we are calling the function by its name without any special triggers, so it has the parentheses. No parentheses with this syntax on click. Yes, parentheses, and we're calling it or invoking it on its own. Lastly, I also want to tell the user on screen, all names deleted. Have a nice day. So multiple things are happening in this case. We're giving ourselves, the, the developer, some feedback. We're clearing out the array, making it empty. We're hiding any names that may have been visible on screen. And then we're giving a, a pop-up box to the user that they accomplished what they were trying to do. Say that again. It's de it's definitely deleted when you go through the process of trying to delete it. Function hide all will only hide on screen the names. Yeah. But here we have deleted it. All the parts actually right We're emptying the array. Yeah. And then we're hiding if the names were visible. Logically, 
logically it does different things to think about at once. So let me try that out. So I'm going to put some names. Show all. There's names in the array clearly. I'm going to clean out my console first. Delete names. This time I'll say OK. They wished to delete. Pop up all names deleted. Function hide names. There's no more names to show. If we didn't have function hide names, it would have still shown names on screen that were left over, even though we had deleted them from memory. Showing names. There's no more names in the array. Please enter at least one. Okay, I'll enter one. Save. Show. Now there's names. Delete the names. Confirm it. Remove from screen. Remove from the <coughs> array. On screen, nothing in the array anymore. If I added a name and saved it and deleted and said, never mind, never mind. Nothing really needs to display on screen. We could pop up and say, thank you for not deleting the names. Something. It doesn't matter. But in the console, we have the feedback for ourselves. They didn't delete. We could make it do more in the in case of false, but they canceled, so cancel is canceled. Right? They canceled it. But we could further do a pop-up in the false case to also say, you did not delete the names, if you want. I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it like that, but this is the big idea here. Several steps to do in case they said true. Nothing really under false. And default is if I didn't think of a third possibility. In this case, there's no third possibility. But there could easily be in other instances. At this point, I'll wind down the main lecture, then we'll have some lab time. We've, we've gotten close to the result that I had shown at the beginning of the day. We haven't gotten to the part about randomly choosing names yet. That's okay, that's coming up next. But at this point, we've got the functionality, hopefully up to this point, where you're able to capture names, save them in an array, retrieve all the names, hide the names, show the names, delete the names with a little bit of error checking there, or confirmation, and then closing it and all of that. So notice all that we have to do to get these things to work. If I'm using an app, you know, if I'm trying to close multiple windows in a web browser, sometimes it pops up. I think it'll do it here. Yeah, here. Are you, you're about to close Firefox. You're going to lose 18 windows. Something like that is happening. Uh, the trigger of the button to close in whatever language Firefox is written in is checking. Document.getElementById close button. And then that pops up a confirm, so to speak, where you've got the true and the false. And there must be like some kind of case, perhaps. In case of cancel, great, stay in Firefox. In case of true, of close tabs, then you do the true part. This has a third possibility. Warn me. So there's now a third choice there, case 3, where it will not warn me next time. It'll just do it without me confirming it. So built in Firefox here, that's kind of what we're doing. Confirming and switch, true and false and such. When we come back, we'll f continue with this project where then we'll start to do with the random numbers. Pull an item out of the array. Right now it's in a perfect order, the order that I put it in, first in, first out. I want to then randomly get a name out of it, one of 20 possible names, and then I want to uh, arrange all the names in a random order every time I press random. So first John, then Judy, then Bill, and then Bill, then Judy, then John. I want it in different orders. So that'll be more about playing with the array, displaying content, checking code. That'll be for next time. But if it's working up to this point, uh, good. If not, I'm going to put the code in the folder in just a moment. 
and then we'll do some lab until 9.30. Any general questions about what we talked about today? This is our intro to JavaScript, and you're seeing here, from line 23 to 89, it's just JavaScript. The HTML is pretty small, from 10 to 20. 10 lines of HTML, and you know, um, 60 lines of JavaScript with comments. But often the JavaScript is more complex, and we didn't even get to yet, what if I'm typing gibberish or numbers? I haven't gotten to that part. This is why there's bugs in software. This is why there's updates to software. There's problems that could happen. There's new functionality that could be added. There's misspelled code that was released into the wild. We need to release the new version of the code. And this is the beta testing process. Because uh, I could think of different possibilities. What if I try it like this? What if I try to delete with no names? That causes an error. What if I try to hide with no names? So there's these things I have to figure out as a beta tester. Actually, alpha testing, even earlier than that. All right, that's it for the moment. Uh, remember, this video is going to be uploaded. You can replay it whenever you'd like. And we'll do it again on Thursday.